All right, cool. So I think uh, I think we're going to jump in then and get started here. Uh, two things that I wanted to uh, start off with. Well, first of all, uh, our Friday edition of Military Trailblazer Office Hours, uh, this is our open Q&A session. So typically, we don't have any agenda. Um, we usually don't have speakers. Sometimes we do, but usually we don't. Uh, and the whole goal here is that if you have a question on the Trailhead badge, uh, a super badge, you're stuck on something at work, uh, you have some issue you're trying to figure out in Salesforce, you can't figure it out. Um, we're here just to be a second set of eyes or 35 times two set of eyes uh, to try to help you out and solve a problem that you might have. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is that if you have not joined our newly created Slack workspace, uh, please do so. Um, so what I'm going to try to start doing is, and here I'll put the invite in the chat, and I just sent that to all the waiting room. Hold on, let's uh, try that again. Um, so the goal here is that after our call, uh, we always have things that we want to share, like, uh, you know, the chat history, uh, links about something that we've talked about, um, you know, whatever it is, screenshots, uh, uh, GitHub, just, you know, uh, links, URLs, things like that. Um, so instead of trying to put those on a quick doc or sharing them on LinkedIn or anything like that, um, I'm just going to start using Slack. So if you join that workspace, uh, we have a general channel, which has everybody in there. Uh, we have individual channels for this session, for David's session for a new session that uh, is going to be coming up as well. Um, so that's a kind of a cool place to, to collaborate. And uh, the nice thing is too, if you see somebody on the call or, you know, you're chatting back and forth with somebody on the call, uh, it's a nice place you can kind of sync up after the call as well. So cool. Um, well, that's that. Uh, I'll throw that link down there again in case somebody or somebody didn't get it. Uh, but that's our Slack workspace for military trailblazer office hours. So but with that, we will open it up to questions. Does anybody have anything that they would like to go through today? I hopefully have a quick one for you. I was going to say, I saw you off mute. I knew that you were going to throw one in there. All right, let's go. What do you got? <laughs> um, compact layouts are what shows for if you hover over something, correct? Compact layouts? Yeah. If you yeah, want I believe so. The, if you want. Okay. Yeah, do you so know if, why... It, um, I just added two fields to it for on the compact layout, and but it's not actually it's showing the field labels, but not the information that's been populated in there. Do you know why it might do that? I have absolutely no idea. Well, let's see if we can try to figure this out. So let me share my screen and let's take a look here. So for those that might not be aware, um, when you hover over a lookup field in Salesforce, um, there's a little window that pops up. So this is uh, one of my Trailhead Playground orgs. So for example, if I were to go to the contact page here um, and our contact is connected to an account record, um, in theory, if I were sitting on that contact record and I hovered over the account lookup field, a little box should pop up showing me some information about that account. And you can see it right there, all right? So is this the one that you're trying to update? Basically adding fields to the section right here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, full disclosure, every time I have to do anything with these layouts, I have to refigure it out every time because um, I do it so seldomly that it just never sticks. <laughs> um, so let's just see if we can take a look. So um, in theory, this should be on, I believe, the compact layout for the account record for that. Yeah, for whatever you're for whatever you're trying to hover over, it should be on that object. Yeah. So let's take a look. So if we go to the account. Um, let's look at our contact layouts. And right now it looks like we have system default as our main compact layout. So in this one, uh, we go from account name all the way through annual revenue. Now, I don't believe I saw all that in here. So we had six fields here, type, phone, website, account owner. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Site was the last one that popped up. So I wonder if it's a limit on the number of fields it'll actually display. Um, so I'm curious, like... The limit's 10. Yeah, so if we clone this, um, you can't edit the system default. So I'm going to clone this as like uh, test, or no, not RH. Everything Everything's in green in my head as RH for resource zero. <laughs> um, test account compact layout. All right, and in this case, let's just get rid of everything except like two fields. Now, after you create the compact layout, uh, the next important thing to do is then actually 
look at your compact layout assignments and make sure that you have the appropriate one assigned. Uh, so if we go to edit assignments right now, uh, primary is set as system default. I'm going to switch that to the one that we just created and I'm going to save that. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is before I go back here and refresh to see if that worked, um, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to go to setup and I'm just going to, I want to confirm that I don't have caching turned on right now. Um, basically, whenever you're working in like a sandbox and you're trying to make a configuration change, um, you go back to the page and you refresh and you assume that you know, whatever changes you made are going to be there. Sometimes that's not always the case uh, because Salesforce does some pretty heavy caching within Salesforce to improve performance. So if you go in the setup, I wouldn't recommend doing this in production because it can add some uh, you know, performance issues. But if you go in here, this setting right here, enable secure and persistent browser caching. If you uncheck that, whenever you make a configuration change and you go back to the page and refresh, you're more or less guaranteed you're going to see the refresh thing and not some copy of it in the cache. So I'm going to refresh this uh, contact here and let's just see what we have there for the account hover. I did save this, right? Okay. I didn't save it. Oh, maybe I did. Okay. So it takes you right back to that same screen. All right. So when we look at our account name and I put my mouse over this now, I can see, looks like my updated fields here. So we have uh, whatever those two fields I included. Okay, so how many fields did you uh, did you add onto your layout? I added two and the field labels are there. Okay, so but I have account name and type and it looks like account name and type are both showing up. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so you're seeing the label, you're just not seeing the value? Yes. So basically, like on yours right now, it said it would say type, but it wouldn't actually have what the type is, even though it's populated on the account. Could it be a field level security thing? I don't think so, because it's just a start and end date for. All right. Well, we can we can prove that out, right? So I added uh, type onto my compact layout here. So in theory, if I were to go to the type field, let me make sure I didn't leave anybody in the waiting room. Okay, there we go. Uh, so if I were to go to the type field um, on the account. Uh, I should be able to get to field level security for all my profiles from here. I'm fairly certain I don't have any permission sets right now that have this field that might be granting access. But if we remove access to that field from all of our profiles, and this is usually where I panic having come from a customer call. I am, in fact, in a trailblazer playground. That's good. Okay. <laughs> all right. So if we refresh now, let's see if we can still see that field or if it shows the field and hides the value if it just hides the field completely uh, this might be a good test here so now if i hover over the account name okay so it hides it completely so you're seeing the label but not the value of the field um i don't know what else that could be um yeah i can't see any other reason why it would display the field. If you had access to the field, it should display it. Um, and if you click into the account, you can then see that value on the on the following page. Yep. That's actually why I thought I would add it is because um, that way I don't have to keep clicking into it to see that, but I would just have it there to verify that other information matches between the two. So that was why I was just adding it real quick. Yeah, I'm not sure. Anybody else have any thoughts as to why on a compact layout you would see the field, but it wouldn't be showing the value. And when you click into it and you go to that account or go to that record, you can see the value from there. I have run into similar issues with other <clears throat> applications where you have a naming convention issue. Um, fields with the same name, you pull one, has the data in it, but the one that um, that you put on the display is the one that doesn't have the data. Exactly could what be. I was going to say. So if you go to your object and go to your fields and relationships, search for that, just maybe the first part of that name, you probably will see more than one field with that name. And you're using one in your compact layout and the other one on your page layout. Mm, no, unfortunately, that is not what the issue is. So you have one field with that name. Definitely yeah, not confusing it for another field. Yep. It's start date and end date. <laughs> Start date and end date, that's uh, custom fields or standard fields? Nope, they're custom fields. 
and there the data type is date. Okay, I don't see any reason why um, date fields should make a difference, but just for fun here, let me uh, let me go in here, and if we go back into account, go back into our contact uh, layouts, compact layout. Sorry, um, we go to our new compact layout that we have here, and this is where I'm going to realize that I don't have any date fields on the account. But let's just see. Uh, what would be a date field? Yeah, I probably don't have any. Year started? That's just Maybe. a year. Though. Yeah, it's probably a number field. Well, let me do this. I'll, I'll create one real quick. Um, so on the account object, let's go to fields. And just to keep it consistent with what you're doing here, let's do new. I can't imagine it would have anything to do with dates, uh, but now is where I'm thinking, like, have you Googled for known issues or anything like that? I literally, release? I literally just saw it while we were on the call. So that <laughs> okay. so that's why I thought maybe I'd luck out on not stumping you since I haven't had a chance to Google it yet. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine it would have anything to do with dates, but, you know, we are kind of in that weird period, like after a release where there could be some regressions or something. All right, so so if we go back to our compact layout and go to our test account compact layout, edit. All right, so if we, uh, what do I call that thing? Start date, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. start date. So I'll throw that in there. And then if we go back to our contact and refresh, uh, let's see if this is any different. I mean, yours is going to be empty because you haven't populated the field if it does show up anyway, but. True. Yes, I guess I should go put a value in there. Um, but this is the negative test. So we'll see right. if this, if right. it at least it shows is. the field. Right. Um, all right. So if we look here, we can see the field. There's start date. Okay. Um, and then I should be able to, I guess I got to click and edit. All right. So we go to the account record and save edit should be around here somewhere. Oh, edit. All right. So start date, uh, we'll put something in there like the 14th. Not to give out personal information, but that's my birthday. So, <laughs> Happy. Um, all right. So now if we go back to our contact. We hover over our account. Yeah, it's shown there. So, yeah, I'm not really sure why it would show the label, but not the value. One more question on it, though, is, is this a formula date field or is this a regular date type field? Just date type field. I when, can, you go, uh, when you go into that field, uh, into the actual, not the field, but into your fields and relationships and look at the details as it, are you using the formula editor in that um, field details? Okay. It pops up the actual little calendar. Um, it is. It can be populated by flow from another field, um, but it can also be manually entered. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things about those thing, uh, those fields on the compact layout, it cannot display data that's coming from another object. So by any chance, that's what I was asking. And not just if you're looking at it from the UI experience, if you're looking at it from setup and objects manager, and you go into the field itself and the details, is there anything in the, um, filter area where you have the formula editor. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. I so what are we saying about coming to meetings and stumping people? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get a reputation. Nobody's going to want to talk to me anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's a, that's a good one. I don't know. So when you go to the record, you can see the value you go anywhere else in the application. You can see the value. It's just on that hover or the compact layout that you're not seeing it. Yeah, because the flow should not be impacting it at all because the flow would just be putting in the data. It's not formula yeah. putting it in. It's literally it's in the data as a field. 
It has fixed itself. It is now showing. There you go. A cache. <laughs> It'll be the cache caching cache. issue that we were, that we talked about. Absolutely cache. Well, it's funny because like like the fact that the fields were there, it's interesting that you know the actual field labels were there. They were just empty on the hover, and now it's got information. So yep. all right. Cache. Well, we uh we learned a little bit about compact layouts, so that's uh, that's good there. We learned about caching. That's nice too. Uh, cool. Well, I'm glad, Sandy, that we were able to help you with your your uh, targeted stumping issue that you brought to the table here. Um, all right, cool. Well, let's open it back up then. Any other questions on any other topic or anything? Uh, Bill, I see your hand up. So, yeah, what do you got? <laughs> um, hi, Bill. Uh, I hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving as we uh, probably all were not on this call last week. Hey, so I wanted to follow up on something that that we talked about two weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, if I can share my screen. Sure. Yeah, go for it. Okay. So uh, for those of you, uh, make sure I have the right one. So this is, yes, you should see my screen now. It says yeah. approval yeah. processes. Yes. Yeah. So this is um, the approval process management super badge. And you have to make uh, several approval processes, of course. You can see her here, I've got one called new enhancement request. Yep. And the question that I had had, um, or the issue that I was having is that um, I had five fields that had to have a value in them before it allowed the user to save. And some of these are, Dates. Well, let's say one's a description, so it's text. Another one is a date, and the other ones are uh, pick lists. Yeah. Right. So we had come up with, um, okay, well, if you have to have something in there, and you guys aren't going to be able to see a little pop this, up but this pop up, but there are four, um, four values for approval status. And I've just selected the four of them, and there they are. So this is where we left it on uh, on Friday last, is that to have something in there, it equals, it's not new and new, but new the, the four, yeah, doesn't matter, the four that are there. However, that is, and that's where we left it. And then I played around with it some more. And that was not the answer. That was not the way to make it work. The way to make it work was just like the one below it and is to, is to not equal blank. So I just kind of wanted to share that. It's not, if you've got um, a pick list it, and you have to have something in there, it's not, equals something it's not it's not equal to blank um so a couple of things um yeah. maybe a way to put that would be if so i guess there's the approval process part of it and then there's just in general when you create a record part of it right so mm -hmm. if you wanted to enforce that new enhancement requests um, can't be submitted for approval without having some kind of status selected yes um you could put that in the approval process to say, you know, you have to enforce that approval status is not equal to blank. Another right. way you could do it is to say that um, you can't save an approval status, you know, without that field being populated. So maybe a validation rule. So they can't even save it without right. that being populated and they wouldn't even be able to submit it for approval without getting it saved first. Right. So that could right. be a way to think about it. Yeah. Um, I, I don't, I don't think the, the badge, the, I don't think the badge would accept that answer. Yeah. Yeah. But in general, yes, a validation rule as well. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, the natural extension to the validation rule saying it has to be filled in would be to maybe put a default value on that field um, that is like um, open or something like that. So basically, when the record gets created, it automatically has a, an approval status of not submitted or open or whatever you would put in there. Right. But, right. And I think yeah. there are some other pieces of that, what you're talking about later on in the uh, in that in that work. Gotcha. Well, I appreciate the update. Yeah. Thank no you. Problem. Hey, I no, also I wanted to share something. Uh, yeah. I have struggled with the admin exam for a long time. 
Um, and I noticed as I was poking around trying to find something else, Salesforce added a Salesforce certified associate test yep. back in September. And I had not heard about it. Um, and just looking for, looking for, a, as my kids say, looking for a W, look, looking for a win. Because, uh, I mean, you take that test off enough, I don't care who you are or how inflated your ego is. It, it, it's a kick in the teeth for sure. Yeah. Um, so I, I took that exam. Yay. I'm now a Salesforce certified associate. Nice. Um, Congratulations. <laughs> but I, I re- the reason I bring it up here is because I recommend it to anybody who's either in that same situation or really just starting out and wants to be able to demonstrate that they're starting the, the process of learning Salesforce. I mean, like my, my job, they hired me without any certifications, thank gosh. But um, I, it, I'm at least showing them now, like, hey, look, at least I'm making some progress. At least I understand the Ding Dang platform enough to pass this test. Um, so if you run into anybody who's uh, new, I mean, I deal with a lot of people that are coming off of active duty looking for work. And, and I think that you know, taking that exam would show that you're inv- at least involved in the ecosystem and have some understanding. Um, it's compared to the admin exam, it's it's much easier. It's three yeah. answers, pick one, 40 questions. And it's through the same testing platform that the admin exam is. Web yes, Assessor or whatever it is. Yeah, so that's a benefit right there, just so you can kind of get an idea of how that process works, make sure your computer works, you know what, that's kind of it, get an idea of how the of, questions are. A lot of posed. people have, I mean, just just in taking the, the physical mechanics of taking the exam can sometimes throw you off. Yeah. Uh, some people have never done that at home or like I won't go to a testing center because I don't trust that traffic is not going to make me late or not in time and I'm going to be all flustered when I get there and that's going to mess with things. So it's, for me, it's much easier to take it at home. Yeah, um, no, but yes, you're right. It, it's, it's practice for all of the stuff leading up to taking the exam, you know, and it's, it's, uh, I think, it, I think it has a worthwhile place. Well, I'm happy that you got the W. <laughs> um, I'll be happy to hear about your next W. Uh, when we'll you see. Give us another yeah. update, but yeah, yeah. definitely uh, that associate exam. Kind of a nice stepping stone. If uh, your target is admin, maybe taking the taking the associate one is, is kind of a, like I said, stepping stone to get to that next one. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, all right. So I did see another hand raised, uh, Stephen. Hey, Bill. Uh, I might share my screen. Hopefully, yeah. this is just a quick, easy one. That's driving me nuts. Is it formula so, uh, field related? Nah, I'm good okay. at this. <laughs> um, yeah, so with with events, like I've got this flow going where you can create event and then add a whole bunch of attendees who are part of a public group. Mm. And then so when I'm logged in assistant admin, you know, if I wanted to just get rid of one of these attendees, that's fine. I can just cross them out, hit save. But if I'm logged in as a user on the profile, they just don't have the save button. Like they can still get into edit like the record but i just don't know yeah how i can give them to save like i've looked through profile permissions and things but i'm just not sure what i'm missing on there because they can still come in you know click the pencil and get rid of the person but now i've just got no save button um can you get rid of one more person there can you click that extra like bobby yeah okay so no no save button pops up there Okay. Yeah, and you know, like, even if I change the title, nothing comes up there. Yeah, it's just no options. Um, has anybody run into this issue before? That looks like a page layout issue. They would not even be able to get into the edit the fields if they don't have edit rights. Looks like the button is removed from the page layout. Well, you page layouts, you don't necessarily put a save button on there. That should be something yeah. that's kind of inherent it, it, it to the platform. It depends. It, it depends on how they have that set up. But normally, you won't get to edit if you don't have edit screens. I mean, they edit have, um, is this page overridden? Like, is that a uh, custom page by chance? No, not really. Not that I'm aware of. I mean, because like on the, the profile, the one they're using, like, so they've got attendees, edit access and things. 
But um, so if you go to the event object yeah. um, and look at yeah. actually go back a step here, yeah. If you go and set up to the event object, um, take a look at the lightning actions and whatever tab. I forget what it's called. Sure. Can you uh, render your page? Mobile. <laughs> so I got the uh, Australian VPN on, so I could. Yeah, watch before the... before you go into that, take a look at oh, the uh, okay. the buttons, links, and actions. Oh, okay, yeah. So I'm just curious. Um, so new event, you got that? Okay, so this is where I was kind of going towards. Um, it looks like the edit one. You have the standard page, but I did see on new event you had the event creation visual force page. And that's kind of where yeah. I was leaning. Like, you know, if it was a custom design page, maybe there's something going on in that visual force code that's not rendering that JavaScript button or that visual force page button. Um, but I don't know if so that's all, the one that we're seeing or. All that one will do is just when you're from the calendar, like this is up here, because you can't, like, this layout doesn't exist. So you need a visual force page. So well, this suggests, like, well, yeah, that's the, that's the new, but the one that you were doing was edit, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that, so, that edit page is actually a custom Visual Force page. I don't think so. Um, go back to your other your setup tab where you were looking at the uh, the event actions. So, right there, the... Yeah. Okay, that's new event. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I got that. Yeah, backwards. yeah. So, so, all we're doing through here is, you know, just... Yeah. Bill, um, and then... Like all this will do and now create um so we can add the attendees. Yeah, let me see. Add the digital team. And then it'll just redirect you to like the standard event page with everyone gotcha. added in. So this is an like visual for, forcing. Oh sorry. Is that happening for every user other than admin and like every profile or just one profile? Uh, I mean only the one that I'm trying on. Like nearly every user is on the one profile. Anyway, but yeah, like Nia, who I'm logging in, as she's the one who need to edit this. Yeah, so I see that somebody posted the exact same thing that you're describing here uh, for a different custom profile trying to access it. They don't see the save button. Um, unfortunately, that was in 2019 and nobody posted a solution here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because I've seen um, stuff like controlled by hierarchy and things, but like, because the owner comes in um, or the organizer comes in like as the public calendar rather than as a user. So I don't even think I can put them like in a role hierarchy. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good question. Again, I don't think it's a page layout thing because if it's the standard page, all that, the save, cancel, all that stuff is built yeah. in. Um, so that would lead me to a permission issue. They're built in, but you can override and remove buttons, that, those features. How the do you know? Do you know if they're using the lightning um pages, lightning record pages, or if they're using just the old page layout still? You're talking like the dynamic forms versus the yeah, because I know the dynamic stuff kind of um some of it's not perfect and it kind of really screws things up. Like I added a field so that I could just see a certain thing, and I literally changed it to that field need the only person can see is me it emptied the like nobody could see anything anymore and i'm like i literally did it for one and there was i didn't do anything wrong it's just something weird about the yeah. dynamic layout stuff that happens yeah i don't know i don't, I don't think that would be the issue um steven did you see dan's yeah. uh, post here have you checked those no sorry yeah so uh, basically okay. said uh under system permissions on the profile disable event edit checkbox or Test checkbox. Yeah, and I didn't vet this bill. I literally just looked online, saw something, and posted it without. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's fine. I mean, that's how we do it, you know. Reckless abandon. <laughs> so they have ended events. So the, and you want to uncheck that? Like what uncheck it, save, selected? and then recheck it and save. Is that kind of what we're thinking about, or? Because you would think they would need edit events to be able to edit these things. Right? Yeah, to create, edit, and delete, which they should have. Yeah, maybe check the profile against the one that does work and see if those what those settings are. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm I'm system admin. That's kind of the only other uh, profile right, yeah. 
to yeah. choose. Yeah, it's just quite a small org. So it's <laughs> nail them. Um, yeah. Yeah. So why for edit posts on records I own? I wonder why that one's not checked. That's interesting. Yeah, and you did it for attendees as well as individual fields. And in both cases, it wasn't showing up with the save button. Yeah, yeah. I hadn't tried before this call, but sorry, where am I logged in? Is a yeah. So you know, I can click the pencil and it looks like I can edit. But if I actually click the edit button, um yeah, if I click the edit button, yeah, then I get permission issue hmm. level of access necessary. Yeah, so why, where would that permission be? Oh. And I haven't looked at this in a while, but under um, under the profile, if you're editing the profile, do, you, do they have under the object settings, do they have a separate line item there for events? Like with separate CRUD permissions? Yeah. So, and they have edit but access on that? Well, on the fields, they do. Um, yeah, it's like on the object itself here. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. And then at the top there, there's not that like object settings that's controlled by the other, no. the other setting. Okay. Yeah. I could see. Because in sharing settings, I did try here as well. Um, oh, no, here's calendar, I think. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, because in calendar, um, you've got like different, it's not your standard private, public, or anything else. Sorry, I'm still logged in as a. Yeah, okay, well. Yeah, so Sounds that's. A crazy compare. Give that a go. Yeah, I, I was about to mention that, uh, Sheba, that's awesome. Uh, thank you for posting that. So, Salesforce crazy compare. It's a good one. Would the activities object have anything to do with permissions? Uh, what was that question? I'm uh, sorry. The activity object, would that have anything to do with the permissions on the event? I think it would, right? Because that activity object is kind of a, a joint thing between tasks and events. Um, does activity even show up though in the profile in the object settings? Activities does <clears throat> doesn't have its own object, but it is like a it's hidden private. object. Yeah. So yeah, in the OWDs they got it as private. Well, it's being controlled by parent, or is it private? What's it, it was private. I might do a control by parent because the parent is going to be the event or the task um, for that activity. If I got that right, if it's because it's a it's a detailed record object in the schema, so it's got to have a master. I would look at the schema builder and see what the relationship is between events, emails, tasks, and activities, just to make sure you're clear about that. Because if it's yeah, it like a lot of these events are kind of going to be standalone things. Like, you know, people like that, the idea behind it is people, you know, if they want to do internal staff training, you know, someone yeah, be like, oh, can we do there's this? Some, yeah. There's an activity layer with all of those tasks, emails, all those activity objects, if you will. So the activities yeah. is, is a layer that connects tasks, um, events, and emails into the activity feed. So hmm. maybe changes to control by parent might allow you the right security setting that instead of it being private and having to deal with it, you could. Yeah, I thought right that control setting. by parent on activity that was more of like an activity is related to an account or it's a, related to an opportunity or something like that. Um, I didn't think that that had anything to do with the relationship with tasks, events, yeah. and activities. Because um, they, these events, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Either. I don't know either. I'm just saying that's what I, yeah. I thought is to try of, as a variable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can't get to uh, the sharing screen from this event, can you? Uh, what do you mean by the sharing screen? 
Yeah, there's like that. Um, the like when you hit the drop down, you have edit, delete. Sometimes there's that sharing uh, where you can actually see like who all has access to a record. I'm going to add that to um, the does the profile have access to this record type of this event? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the org wide defaults are also good. Mm. Well, defaults. like as much as I can make out, they should be. Like yeah. Calendar. And if you go to the profile um, for this user that you're logged in as, um, yes. there's no, if you hit the under object settings, if you hit that drop down where events is right now, there's no activity. There's no like separate activity thing here, right? Yeah. So there's no activity and there's no calendar either. Who owns these events? A public group. Hmm. Help article <clears throat> unable to edit a coworker's task and events based on role hierarchy and based on sharing settings. It says when you view a coworker's calendar, you're able to see their assigned task and events, but are unable to edit them. So considering that they're not the owner, it sounds like they're not able to edit. Yeah. Admin the, always overrides owner. Admin always over. Yeah. Okay. Don't want to give it modify all. If that's I'll the only put option. Link then. In here to this. Yeah. It says based on role hierarchy. Someone who yeah. is higher in the role hierarchy can edit the tasks and events assigned to the users. This is based on sharing yeah. settings. If your organization has set activities to control by parent in your sharing settings, then users can edit tasks and events owned by other users, provided they are able to edit the parent records yeah. associated with the activity. But these are standalone, right? Yeah. yeah but, uh, so it's basically by the ownership that restricts the edit. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I was hoping there might be a little... Is this the page you're on? This considerations on? Yeah, Stephen. I think this might be a uh, yeah. might be one. Uh, I always hate to suggest this to people, but maybe a case with Salesforce just to see what yeah, the issue is. No problem. Oh, no, thanks for everyone's time. Yeah, and what I can do is I'm going to try to uh, I'll try to recreate this on my site too. A little bit of setup I'd have to go through, but. Did you get an email stating that your uh, change of sharing for the net activity has completed? Uh, did you change your? Yeah, you yeah I, I did, but yeah, I, I can. I'll keep troubleshooting, but yeah, because I think the like the issue is because yeah, like it doesn't have a parent object, and then it's not owned by a user, so the role hierarchy won't matter either. Yeah. But yeah, processing is complete. All right. Um, well, Stephen, I'd, I'd ask you maybe if you do figure this out, uh, maybe report back to us just so we can have an idea of what the issue was. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thanks so. all. Yeah. Uh, cool. Uh, so we'll uh, open it back up. Sean, I see you have a hand up. You got a question? All right. Yes, I'm... Uh... Doing this flow that um updates uploads on a project. And um I just you know I have the flow set up, um, but it's just not updating. It's working. It's... Oh sorry, uh, you're breaking up a little bit for me, but I think it's definitely my internet today. My <laughs> video is like out of sync with my voice, it's gonna wig me out a little bit, but um, oh, essentially, like you're trying to create a flow on the project object, and what is that flow supposed to do? Um, it's updating quotes. Um, I don't work in quotes that much, but it's it's updating quotes. Um, bringing in the quotes to the project um, related to the opportunity. And okay. right now, right now, I'm testing it. Uh, I um build it now i'm testing it but it's not working properly uh is this something that you'd be able to share your screen so we could take a look at oh yes yeah that would be a lot better yeah let's take a look so uh is this something that when an opportunity is like closed one you want to create a project and then move over or copy the quotes something over to the project um so this is there's more going on in the flow um I, I added this part of the flow, but uh, um, is quote the standard Salesforce quote, or is that like a custom object? Is it 
custom object, I believe. Well, pretty sure it's custom. I always go here to check. Actually, it is a standard one. Okay. So now, what are you trying to update on those quotes? You're trying to populate the project ID or something like that? Yes, essentially, I'm pull, I'm actually updating the uh, the project. I'm pulling in the, the quotes to the project. Um, that's linked to opportunity. Okay, do me a favor. Scroll up a little bit here. All right. So in this case, you're doing update. update updates from quote. Okay, so use the project record that triggered this. And then I up uh, I did this part today. Um, okay. Uh, hold on one sec. I think I, I think I see your issue here. Go ahead and hit cancel. And then double click on that related quotes that get records. Yep. I didn't think about Roll down just a cool. smidge here. Okay. So is the theory that on a given opportunity, there's only going to be, okay. So you're, you're getting this synced quote, just that one quote record uh, that's synced. Okay. So, and you're, you have that check to only the first record. Okay. All right. I'm tracking again. Go ahead and hit click, uh, cancel yeah. here. So you're yeah. getting that one quote record. Um, and then the updates from quote, that's where you're taking information from that quote and putting it onto the project. All right. So let's go in that updates from quote for a sec. Okay. And I also did a report to get the uh, the ones with the right values to update that record. So, you know, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's take a look at that, uh, that element right there. All right. So yeah. in this case, then you have a whole bunch of fields here um, that you're trying to populate with data from the, the syncing quote. So you have quote from related quotes. And then yes. like how they use this point. variable, um, this quote variable. Um, so yeah, I, I just did. Yeah. No, when you actually run this, what is it doing? Is it throwing an error message or is it just not working? No, um, I, I did it just now. Um, here's some all the elements. So it's running through the whole thing. Um, Here's the part that's just I just edited. Um, I guess what I'm asking. It seems like it's getting mm -hmm. zero values when there was values there. Um, unless okay. I interpret it wrong. Okay, so they're not zero values, but a zero number when there. I think there's a should be a number there. Okay, so what I was gonna say is uh, a few things to keep in mind here. Um, if you scroll all the way down to the to the bottom of the screen on the, on the right side, your debug details, uh, scroll all the way down to the bottom of that. Um, oh, well, so, yeah. So if you're looking in the org to see if this was updated, uh, it probably won't because it looks like that's being rolled back, right? So you have your oh, yes. back in there. Um, if you're concerned that you're looking at the detail information here in the debug, and like for example, you see internal PM project amount equals zero, but you actually assume that there's supposed to be numbers in there like from that syncing quote you think that there should be a value um what i might suggest is grab the id from that quote that's right there so if you scroll up um right after that 0, 0.0 it has the quote and then it equals and an id so that 0q05e if you just copy that id from uh from the zero yeah from the zero over yeah. to uh that cas uh copy that and then go into your browser, like where you're actually logged into Salesforce and right after .com, paste it right after .com. So get rid of everything after that and just paste in the ID. So essentially delete lightning setup, object manager, delete all that stuff after .com and just paste in the ID. And still have the, uh, the slash there, right? Yeah, yep. And just paste the ID right after that and go ahead and enter. That'll take you to the quote that is being picked up as part of this logic and then just take a look at the field right there and just see if that field is actually populated um, with the value that you're expecting. Yes. Yeah. It seems like yeah, these ones right here should essentially go to the project. Okay. Now, if you go back in your flow and you go to that update records or updates from quote element there, Okay, so where, what was that field now that uh, you were trying to get with those values? Um, PS sales price, PS, I mean, uh, ex internal PS sales price, external PS 
So the price um an internal PM sales price. Okay. Now if you look over on the right side here, so the one that you were looking at was internal PM project amount. What field is that on this screen right here? Internal PM project amount. Because on the right, when we're looking at the debug, it's showing internal oh. PM project amount equals zero. So I'm just trying to curious, like that API name, where do we see that in this where we're trying to update records here? Because it doesn't look like you're actually trying to put a value into that field, at least from what I see here. Um, they used the wrong. I thought these were. Yeah. So in other words, like if you're if you're feeling that it's not being populated with the correct value, um, I'd like to see that value on the quote, and then see where you're trying to put that value from the quote into a project field. Because for at least that one where we're seeing the zero up there, I don't see that field being populated as part of this logic. Okay. I guess I just investigate it more. So I know one of the errors I've made when doing kind of flows like this, where I'm building on somebody else's, is one sometimes if I grab like the wrong, um, what's it, the, the wrong like variable kind of thing. <clears throat> so sometimes that can make a difference. Also, if that is, um, these are the only ones I updated. Um, no, I'm yeah, but I'm talking on so on the the word on your uh the right side though, like the quote from related record, that stuff. It, that's from the element right before it. There was no other choices for like related quotes or anything. No, I mean I did it both ways. The other way I could do it too. Um I, I used the variable that was given there because I thought it was a good idea. I could have just went like this and internal. Yeah, but you did the get and then you're using the value from the get that you had there. Right. Uh, yeah. So, but that's what I mean is like sometimes when I've used other people's variables, like when I go back and actually check what they had in there, that might be part of what could be some of the issues um, sometimes by trying to build off of something else does without double checking that, to make sure it has all the that information. That makes sense. I I, uh, I tried both ways. I ran it both mm -hmm. ways. I got the same oh. um, variable that was given and, and then from just the updated record. So then the other question I would have is for those fields that is on the related quote, um, how are they getting populated and when do they get populated? These are um, not that side where you're trying to grab the information from to input it onto this new thing, record or um, update your record. Let me check. I think they're currency fields. Okay. But like at what point are those? So the information you're trying to get or you're trying to take and put somewhere else, Where when does that information get input? Is it input during this? Is it input prior? Is it already exist? Um, yeah, yes. Uh, well, there it already exists. So what okay. I'm simply trying to do is just pull the data from here into here. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so this is already going to, going to exist there. So there's already records there. Okay. I mean, unless it's null, but if it's not null, and there's decisions in the flow. But if it's not null, let's say like. There's a value mm -hmm. of $2 and then $2 is just going to go over here. So essentially when I work on, so I don't have to navigate around too much. I can just get at one point. Okay. What we're doing. Uh, but I, I guess I, I'll just investigate it more. See what's going on. Um, yeah, that's, um, <laughs> that's interesting. Cause if, uh, if you hit cancel here, just so you don't lose the, the work that you had in there. Um, I would have expected on the right side there, um, when you go through the update step, I would have expected to see that field, that sales price field here. Um, if you scroll up a little bit on that right side, um, do you see that a little bit further up? Um, 
I think it goes in order, doesn't it? It's not random. I have no idea. Maybe we could just do a quick control F and just look for that field name that you were trying to populate. Yeah, that's a good idea, actually. <laughs> yeah, you can even, if you double click on your updates from quote, you can even copy that field name and then search. Yeah. So, yeah, internal. So it looks like those are being populated, right? Uh, there's that 10, 575, 147. So th those fields are, in okay. fact, getting populated. Yeah. Um, I'm not for sure why it's not. It seems like it's it's working here, but just not when I actually do the, it, when, like, manually test it. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks like it looks like everything is correct here. Um, so maybe... Let me check. Maybe... Uh, Maybe it doesn't have the ID to yeah, push it. This. I don't know if I can. <laughs> Full ID. You, usually if it runs here and it doesn't run in, in debug, I mean, uh, in manual testing, it could be because it's not associated with the record. I found out prior time. Uh, well, like I said, this uh, this test that it ran through this time, where it looks like it's grabbing all the appropriate values, that was for that very specific quote uh, that you had there. So I'm curious if you tested with that record manually, um, see if that would work. Uh, what is this triggering off of? This is uh, on the project object. Is there any kind of criteria that we need to look at on the project? Oh, yeah. Um, I had to do uh, an opportunity well, I'm sorry, in the, in the flow itself. So the triggering mechanism of the flow at the very top, what is the criteria that's going to send it into this thing to run? Um, yeah, right there. Does not have any right now? Okay, so when a, when a project record is created. Created, yeah. But it doesn't have any like, conditions. Sorry, I thought that's what you mean. Okay, so let's, uh, let's kind of go through this. So if a project record's created, um it's going to check the block of hours if it's default outcome uh keep going keep showing down here so uh then we have the billing type if it's professional it services yeah keep going keep going related quotes updates from quote okay so real quick double click on that get related quotes how do we get to a related quote in this so this is we're saying get all the quote records where the opportunity id is equal to the project's opportunity and i'm assuming that's an opportunity id field that you have after there so like if you just click on the word uh opportunity on that second and that first criteria oh, yeah. okay yeah um i might tell you to take away that underscore underscore r dot id and just put underscore underscore c but you can leave it there for now that should be fine um and then is synced equals true okay so if you go to if you run this test manually now by creating a project um, I, I did, um, where's the main town? Here's the project I created off of, um, the opportunity. But this project was created after this flow was activated with all your changes, right? Yes. Okay. And, and it's created you... like 10 minutes ago. Wait, I'm sorry, what? Um, yeah, yes. I created like maybe 10, 15 minutes ago. Okay, gotcha. Oh, okay. Now, if you look at that field, the one that we saw that was populated with a value, if you look at that on the project record now, um, you're, you're not seeing that populated? Mm -hmm. um, and just to let you know, um, I do have a hard stop coming up in a few minutes here. Okay, so internal PS right. project amount. All right, now... These should be... Okay, so internal PS project amount. So let's go back to your flow. In your debug side, show me that field on the right side. Not not in here, but on the right side. Because oh, that's okay. what I'm saying. Like that field, you're not actually updating that field as part of your update statement. Internal PS project amount, right? That's the... Uh... I didn't think that I saw internal... PM project amount in your update statement here in your update yes. element. Um, so, example this one. Oh. 
Design. You know what you can do? That that's the API name. So maybe what we can do if you go hit your gear icon. Oh yeah, top right corner. That's why. What we? I can hit what? Yeah, hit the gear icon in the very top right corner, and there's an option there for edit object. Okay. Okay, and then on on this page on the fields uh, tab on the far left here, do a control oh. F, and then paste in that API name. And let's just see if if we can get to that. Uh... Oh, this is this be on quotes. No yeah, project. Actually... Yeah, no, we want to do it on project. So paste in that field name here. Okay, and if you scroll down, yeah, it might be a uh, lazy loading here. Yeah, keep going. Maybe if you just type in external in the quick find. No, I'm sorry. In the in the quick find on the fields here. Oh there my god! Yeah. Okay. So external. Yeah, These are a little I'm bit not... different. That's going into. Yeah, I guess I'm not seeing. In other words, if you go to the project, the field that you're saying is not being populated, what I would like to know is what is the API name of that field? So if you're saying okay. it's the internal PS project amount, um, or is that the field, first of all, that you're trying to check? Um, I'm kind of confused. I have to go back and check it. It should be... Yeah, internal um internal PSSLs, external PSLs, well, and internal PSLs. So here's here's what I would suggest. And then I, unfortunately, like I said, I do have a hard stop I gotta jump to. Um, what I would suggest you do is if you're looking at this project layout and you feel as though a field should be populated from your flow, but it's not being populated, look at that field's, field's label. There too. <laughs> so if you look at that field's label. Go into the object itself, go into the project fields, find the API name of that field that you think is not being populated, and then verify on your flow in your update element. Make sure, like, verify that that field is even being populated as part of your flow logic. Because yeah. I didn't see the one that you were that you were pointing to in, to in that flow logic as being updated. So I think that that's where I would start. Figure out what field you're looking at in the UI. Figure out what the API name is. And then look at your flow update element and make sure that you, you are in fact trying to fill in that field as part of your logic. Because right. the naming convention on your fields are very similar. So I could see how you might easily select the wrong field or you know, maybe miss one of those fields. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And uh hit me up on uh on our Slack. Um, you know, if you still have trouble and we can we can always try to sync up later as well. All right. Okay. And for those that uh, didn't get this message, I'll post it one last time here. Um, if you haven't joined our Slack workspace for military trouble as office hours, please, please do. Um, and I'll thank everybody for joining and we'll catch up next week. Can you do the developer thing? Do you know yet? Uh, yeah, we're, we're working on that. So I'll post, I'll post that in the, uh, in the Slack. Workspace. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks all. Appreciate it.